We have this. I want to put it up on the screen. Appellant's amended motion for emergency expedited review is granted at the direction of the court. Uh, one more time. Appellant's amended motion for emergency. All right. Now tell, my, tell us what that means, please. That means that we are on our way to the Supreme Court. And so the Third Circuit, uh, which is the appellate court, it's the intermediate uh, court between the district, uh, middle district of Pennsylvania, that judge, of course, gave that uh, very legally inaccurate opinion. Uh, Then we appealed. The Third Circuit granted that appeal. They will decide if they want oral argument. And then, of course, whoever loses at that stage, I'm sure, will be appealing up to the Supreme Court. And this is the 14th Amendment argument, I believe, uh, equal protection under the laws, different standards in Philadelphia than, say, in the suburbs of Harrisburg, right? Yes. Well, I want to be clear that we appealed initially uh, just on the very narrow question of uh, the judge denying our ability to amend our complaint. And even though he put in a bunch of other things that uh, decided on the merits on things, he hasn't even heard any evidence. He hasn't reviewed anything. Uh, This is simply just to ask him uh, to ask the Third Circuit to say, yes, he should have allowed us to amend our complaint and then we can move forward. So, Jenna, we saw an image a moment ago. We'll put it back up on the screen. Uh, Sydney Powell, we like her around here. Newsmax, great attorney, helped out Michael Flynn in a big way. General Flynn, over the weekend, we saw that statement from you and Rudy Giuliani, who were standing behind uh, Ms. Powell at that press conference last week, saying she's no longer on the team. Why did you put that out? It seems like, is there a problem or what's going on, please? Yeah, so um, of course, Sydney's been a great friend of mine. Um, and ultimately, the legal team was kind of looking at two different directions. Um, and like lawyers do, we all discuss the best legal theory uh, to serve the client's best interests. And in this uh, in this particular case, we want to make sure to preserve election integrity. And uh, Sydney is very much focusing on Dominion voting systems. And uh, that's going to be a much longer uh, strategy. And that's going to be something that she's investigating. And right now, we're Uh, Rudy and I and the other members of the legal team are focused is making uh, these claims looking at the election official fraud. I mean, this is just astonishing, Greg, where you have these election officials that have just completely disregarded election law in their state. You have governors, you have election officials on the ground telling uh, voters that when they come in, like a good, a lot of good Republicans do on election day, they come in and are told, sorry, you already cast a mail-in ballot. So you can't vote. You can only vote provisionally. Uh, That is a two tiered system of justice. You have these thousands and thousands of ballots, hundreds of thousands of ballots that are being uh, counted in secret. You have naked ballots coming in where there's no uh, security envelope with the ballot. I mean, you have so many different things and instances of voter intimidation. We have thousands of pages of witness affidavits on all of these different issues across six states. We are looking at that issue and focusing on that specifically uh, because we do have a very narrow window here before December 14th, which is when the Electoral College votes, to make sure that we can get uh, this strategy through. I think there are very significant questions on Dominion, why we have 28 states that have their voting systems. And uh, I think that that's something that the legislature should contemplate. And I hope that uh, Sydney is very successful in that work. Okay, so again, and Dominion, uh, just to be clear, your the Trump team is not pursuing that. If something comes your way, great. But your focus and everything is on the uh, the issues you just mentioned, yeah. not not Dominion, because we you know there were problems raised with Dominion even before the election by even left wing media. It's just going to take what too long to establish, or it's too complicated as well. Um, a little bit of both. And, you know, we even had uh, Senators Klobuchar and Warren, who, of course, are Democrats and, you know, no conservatives. They even expressed uh, just uh, last year problems that they had with Dominion. So I think that there are very significant questions that the American people deserve answers to. Uh, but that's just going to take a little more time. And so we are focused uh, on behalf of the president and the campaign with uh, the election official fraud. And so we have no uh, intent at this time to put any of those claims in our current lawsuits, which, by the way, Greg, just to clarify, we only have three lawsuits at this time. So uh, we'll be bringing a few others um, in the coming days. But for all of the uh, the peanut gallery Democrats and reporters out there, they're trying to attribute uh, lawsuits that still deal with election integrity issues, but and are brought by you know really well-meaning people. Uh, they're trying to attribute those to us when those are not on behalf of the campaign. I saw a senator from North Dakota say yesterday that uh, for the most part, you have not 
actually even had the opportunity to submit evidence. So they're they're getting a little bit carried away that the evidence is being laughed out of court. That that's what we're hearing from much of the mainstream media. You well, actually the, the evidence hasn't even been in court, so it can't right. be laughed out. I mean, this is something that is ridiculous. If you look at the Pennsylvania District Court judge. Uh, there in the federal court in the, in the middle district of Pennsylvania, his his opinion actually made a judgment on the merits of our evidence when he hasn't even seen it. I mean, that's remarkable for a judge uh, to to pretend that he has heard all of this and make a judgment on it when he hasn't seen it. So, you know, that's something, again, you know, we're in front of the Third Circuit to try to amend our complaint to move forward with that. And we hope that they will rule as expeditiously as they took up the appeal. We all know that if the roles were reversed, uh, the media would have an entirely different posture on this legal problem. And maybe the legal community would as well. This is uh, unfortunately, this is too lonely a fight for you. You know, the establishment is not on your side, including a lot of Republicans, which I'm taking notes. I wonder if you are or maybe you can't say, but I hope somebody is on your team and I'm sure they are. Well, I, I would just like to say that I hope that every American, regardless of what candidate or party or anyone that you support or policy issue, America is all about free and fair elections. That's why our Constitution has these provisions to protect election integrity and specifically contemplated that there might be corruption or foreign influence. As Americans, we should all be on that same page. We should not rush to judgment when you have, I mean, look, look at just one county in Michigan that 71% of their precincts have a, a discrepancy between their ballot totals and their voter roll totals. That is astonishing. That's something, and that's why the Michigan legislature is actually saying, yeah, we need to hold a hearing on this. We need to get to the bottom of this. That should concern every American. But when you're only focused on politics and you're yeah. only focused on the outcome, that's when uh, people then ignore all of the evidence that they perceive as just pro-Trump. This is all about election integrity, not campaigning.